Uh, Kyrie is a bit of a two-parter. Um, the sense of desperation that a team plays with down 3-0, is that, are you able to replicate that in another game? Like, How do you bring that same exact mentality in game next game? Uh, yeah, but just by putting it in perspective, uh, just what we're up against, um, you know, history's going to be made either way. So we would like to be on the right side of it. Um, but it just comes from just the same sentiment, same phrase I was using the other day, just putting our best foot forward. Felt like game three, we had a good chance to close out that game to at least put us in a competitive spot. Um, but we wait until game four to, to ultimately play our best game. Um, took long enough you know, for all of us to get to the party together uh, and to play for each other the way we did tonight. Um, but it's definitely um, uh, a possibility that we can replicate it, but we understand that we're going against the same great Boston team that's going to make it tough, and we're going into their home, home den, and we have another opportunity to extend the season. That's all we can ask for. So we handled our business tonight, um, but the job is, is uh, still an uphill battle, and we understand that. I saw the, you... Let's go in the middle. Blake Elliott, 105.3 The Fan. Kai, I asked you on Wednesday about your mindset here, right here in the middle. I asked you on Wednesday about your mindset and staying positive and extending the series, and you shared a metaphor to get the bazooka, the 50 cal. <laughs> Do you think that job was executed tonight, and then how does that help kind of the way y'all won tonight in a hostile Boston crowd for Game 5? Yeah, no, it was it was how we started off the game and uh, our ability to go home, get some rest, you know, not having the same 48 hours to uh, get our bodies ready and recover. We, you know, so it felt like it was pretty much a regular season in terms of that aspect. And, you know, what I was referring to in that metaphor is just go home and, and get all the armor and get, get all the ammo that you need and, and get ready for this because we're going to have to keep firing away to give ourselves a chance on the offensive end. But um, I think for us, we wanted to make um, it re very much more respectable than it has been in the past few games in terms of limiting our mistakes on the defensive end. Um, you know, we, we've been one of the best teams in the league of, of getting stops, and um, that's been our identity. And we play better, I think, offensively. And it's just my opinion. I think it can vary across the team, but I think we play better offensively when we're getting stops and able to push the pace and um, you know get a, get easy opportunities in transition, which we weren't doing the past few games as, as often. So it felt good to be on the positive end of uh, seeing our hard work um, reward us, and especially on defensive end. Third row here, Dave. Kyrie, Dave McMahon with ESPN. You're so familiar with it, what it's like to be in the eye of the storm, playing at the ultimate stage uh, in the NBA. That said, how would you describe Luca's response tonight? Uh, I'm, I think he made a few people eat their words in a healthy way. I'll say that in a healthy way. Um, you know, I don't want to curse up here or anything like that or get anyone into any, um, un, you know, unnecessary beef, right, between us and us players in the media. But um, I think this is his first opportunity and first taste of what it's like to be on this stage and to not play up to your capabilities or to be out there towards the end of the game where every mistake is magnified. I, I think that's probably what I'm really referring to is when every mistake is magnified, there is going to be a response. And um, that's you guys' job to give us your criticism. And then we go home and deal with it in a healthy way, hopefully. But um, I think with Luca, I, just like I've been reiterating to the guys, just stay off of social media as best you can, man. And just enjoy the, the moment that we're in. Uh, and it's not just about making it this far. It's about figuring out the little nuances to get wins on this stage. That's what it's about for us as, as competitors, and that's where our focus should be. So he responded very well, and I expected it. Um, I think a lot of people expected it, too, that have seen Luca, have known Luca, but um, you know, just didn't know how it was going to happen. And he made some things happen tonight that I was very proud of him, and um, he grew. And that's what we've been talking about, too, since the beginning of the series is our growth and us trending in the right direction and figuring out how we get wins together as a group with all those external factors still going on. You know, how do you still lock in? How do you still focus in? How do you breathe through some of those mistakes? And I think he did a great job of that tonight. So hopefully we can um, still extend this series going into game five, but we know we still have to play our best and we have to control what we control. Yeah. Fourth row, Ramona. Kyrie, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. You talked the other day about how Boston really knows your game because you were there, you know those guys, and that was the challenge you had to meet yourself of them just really knowing how you play. Yeah, how many games was it that they had in a row? Was it 17? Yeah. Yeah. And, and how, how have you crazy. been able to, to, to take that? Like when somebody knows what you do, how have you been able to evolve throughout the, this game and maybe the last half of the last game too? It's taking time, i tell you that. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it's difficult because as 
as a competitor, you try not to display all your emotions out there to give an edge. But um, when you're going against some of the best of the best, they're going to use everything to their advantage. And I think they've been able to do that. And that's why I refer to just having my number or knowing my game very well. And um, I think I was able to take a step back, too, and talk to my teammates a little bit more about um, just what that pressure can feel like, you know, not just from losing to a team, but just going against a team and knowing that um, they're doing everything possible to stop you, but it's a team game. So I have to really rely on my teammates. And I, and I think, you know, we all did a great job of that tonight of just continuing to support each other. And it's not just me versus Celtics or Luca versus Celtics or anyone versus the media. It's, it's us, um, you know, against the world, sort of say, and, and going against this good Celtics team. You know, you saw all those Celtics fans in there tonight. So they travel in, in packs. You know, when we go back to Boston, there's going to be a bunch of them yelling a whole bunch of crazy stuff still. But I think we've been able to grow and um, face uh, kind of this adversity head on. And, you know, and we're figuring out each other in a, in a crazy way during the, the highest stage of basketball. So it, it's a beautiful thing, but it also can be chaotic if you don't know how to stay poised through it. So I think we're figuring out um, each other throughout those phases. Appreciate the question. Mark. Six row, Vinny. Kyrie, Vince Goodwill, Yahoo Sports. Before the game tonight, Jason had a impassioned sort of defense of the criticism to Luca. Rightfully what, so. Yeah. What does it mean when the coach goes out of his way to have his players back unprompted like that, like feeling that support? Um, I think it shows you how important it is to have uh, quality leaders in the locker room and somebody that's been through it, somebody that can talk through it, and also somebody that's more than willing to sacrifice themselves to take the bullets and the brunt of the responsibility because he knows how important it is for us to focus on the right things. We can't be focused on trying to answer all these unfair critical questions. I mean, some of them may be fair, right? But I think if you're not necessarily out there playing with us, it's going to be hard for us to connect, you know, um, if you're talking shit about one of our teammates. And, and we're not going to go for it. And I think that's what you're seeing, um, not just from us, but our head coach. He's dealt with his fair share of criticism from some of you guys in this room and some guys in the past. And some of you criticize him as a coach, rightfully so, like I said. Uh, but I think if it goes over a certain boundary, you're going to see real humans step up and protect their brother or their sister. So I think that's what you saw from Jay Kidd. I'm, I'm proud of him. And um, I have the same sentiment, man. That's that's our that's our little brother right there, and he's in the finals. He's going to make mistakes, and that's why I also had that kind of peaceful sentiment about me after the game. I'm not about to go up to Luca and just say it's all your fault. That's that's not how it works in our locker room, and we dang sure don't want to start those bad habits now. I've been on teams where we've allowed the media or opinions to infiltrate what we have going on, and it has not worked out well. So I think if we put our best foot forward and focus on the things we control, then we got a good thing going here. First row on the right, Mike. Mike Curtis, Dallas Morning News, Kyrie. Um, Derek Lively had two three-point attempts this season in his career. Um, when he hoisted that shot up, what were you thinking? And what can a shot like that on this stage do for his confidence going forward? Um, I mean, if you're familiar with D-Live's game, then you know in high school he was shooting those threes. He was on a pretty good team, too, that uh, ended up winning a few championships together. Um, but D-Live had uh, an expanded game, sort of say, when he was in high school. Uh, it's, it's crazy. I was watching highlights not too long ago. But when he shoots that, I have the utmost confidence. Uh, I think it surprised a lot of people in the arena because of the attempts and that he hasn't had yet. But for him to step up and shoot that shot, we needed it and uh, created a little bit more separation in the game. It, it eased everybody else out and um, it eased everybody else's feelings that were out there with him. And uh, when you have our, our one of our vocal leaders making a three like that, you best believe he's going to come to the bench and let everybody know he made that shot. So um, everybody was happy for him, and, and we knew it was a big shot. So, um, man, more credit to him. Want him to keep working on it. Um, but I don't know if he shoots it again. But if he's open and shoots it, then we have the confidence in him. First row, Tim. Tim McManney, ESPN. You talk about poise a lot. I know that's something you've worked with, with Luke on in terms of not letting frustration affect his focus. Uh, he vowed to stay out of it with the refs today. He did that. When he's locked in on the game and not the refs, what impact does that have on him? What impact does that have bleeding over the rest of you guys? Yeah, well, Tim, I, I think what we have to also account for is we're in a very physical game. So when you're getting beat up like that, you know, out there every single play down, you're going to have something to say to the refs. And um, in Luca's case, he, his relationship with the refs is not always the healthiest during games. And, um, you know, the referees are humans, too. So we have to respect what they do. They're just a big part of this game, too. It could sway either way. 
Um, and I think what you're seeing is, is him just taking accountability as best he can at this point in his life. And, you know, he's a young person still trying to figure it out. So I give him that grace. But also we got to give him a little tough love where, you know, we let him know and reiterate that you got to stay off the you got to stay off those guys a little bit. Um, you know, so I think it's just lessons being learned. And when he is locked in like that and he's not paying attention to the rest, he is, um, you know, a huge, impactful player for us and a great leader for us. So we just want him to stay consistent on that and um, not be too hard on himself either if he's going to do that. If he gets a tech, I mean, so be it. Uh, no one's fat and frat in the eye, but um, if we're trying to get back into the game and we need the refs, then there has to be a different perspective, a different approach you got to take. So sometimes a good conversation works with the ref. Sometimes eye-to-eye -eye conversation works with them. But um, when you're shit-talking them and MFing them all the time, it could get to them too. So I'm not saying that we're all perfect, but uh, we got to use everything to our advantage on a positive note. Thanks, Gary. Yep.